Okay, Sunday morning in the kingdom, and I forgot the vacuum. Oh my, that must have been a good night. Oh well. But we woke up this morning to zero temperature. Zero. So that's just like freezing, but feels like minus four. Yes, we started off yesterday with snow in the morning, and then last night while I was burning supper for me and the dogs, it was pouring rain for over an hour and a half. Yes, and then it went to a light rain for the next two hours. I'm freaking real. But that's good for melting the snow and ice and everything. Unreal. Okay, on the yo-yo scale, plus 32 Fahrenheit. That's freezing. And then on the feels like plus 25. I can't concentrate today. I don't know why, but that's good temperatures if you're a duck or a penguin. All right. So over here in my pocket today, the staff bought me some garlic yes some garlic to improve my breath and my health i don't know what for but these were bought locally yes and grown locally in china yes a product of china but imported by a company in vancouver uh, richmond bc yeah that's on the west coast the wet coast of canada so here i am trying to improve my health with china garlic oh the joys oh my goodness the things you do to try not to age well yeah i could quit drinking i could quit chasing women i could quit working oh the things we do all right let's scroll this way the flags are over there i untangled them it's a bad glare today that sun is so bright oh well but i'm standing out here because i want to show the world what we're doing Yes, today the staff's going to come over. We're going to get the quad out and haul some wood with the quads. Because there's no uh, snow for the skidoo. I can't see anything, but the sun's over here somewhere. All right. I'm not sure why there's a glare on the screen. Maybe I don't have my glasses on. Yes, I have glasses under the glasses so I can see the little screen and I can't see nothing. So maybe I forgot the glasses. Oh, well, that's the joys of getting old. But here we go. Taking the dampness out of the shop. Okay, the electric furnace is nice, but it doesn't take the moisture out of the air, the dampness. So I'm like the people on the East Coast with their damp cold or the dampness. And I have to use the wood stove to get the heat or the chill out of the air in the shop. Yes, so it's going to be a shop day in the morning and in the afternoon we're going to go out and have some fun on the quads. All right, there we go. We can't see again. The sun is so bright. Unreal. But hopefully we have a good day today. It's Sunday. So I'll remember to bring out the vacuum. I got the dog blankets. They're already airing out. So they'll be fresh for them to lay on for the next week. And everything like that. Well, I better go since I'm screwing up so bad. Here comes the boss. Okay, Sunday morning after answering all the comments and emails and stuff like that. It's pretty quiet. Everybody must be at church. Actually, I had a schedule. Not many. Actually, not many today. All right, so today's project in the morning, seems how we have to go outside in the afternoon in the rain or snow, whatever it's doing, was we're going to cut the rubbers. Yes, we got to get that 46 Chevy up on rubbers because if we start doing the electrical and then raise it up the inch and a half or whatever it is, then the wires might be too short. Okay, so this is what we did on the 38 Maple Leaf. My dad did this back on the 38 GMC back in 1977. So we're basically copying him or what the way we did it. So it works a lot better than a piece of wood or whatever they had or felt or whatever they had back in the day. All right, let's go see the workbench. All right, so I started the wood stove with a small little fire and look at how warm it is in the shop here. Yes, look at that. It's warm in here. All right, but that's okay because we'll be working away, opening the doors and closing the doors and stuff like that. And I brought the vacuum out so I remember to empty it. We got one dog shedding. All right, so growing up, Conveyor belting was rare. Yes, you had to get it from the gravel crushing guys and stuff like that. But then I moved to a mining community, which is dead or dying or whatever. So belting is abundance. All right. So back in 1977, dad was cutting the belting to make the motor mounts or the mounts or whatever body mounts using the slide knife. Yes, look at that. This slides out, slides in. So then when you booger up the blade, you unscrew the screw and you insert the new blade. All right, so look at that, $1.79 for five utility blades. But I'm the new generation. We have the Ofla. See that? Ofla. Yes, if you can say it, you can spell it. And these work good. 
the blades break off so you always have a sharp one oh let's see we got it I'm wrong hand so slide it out break the blades off and keep going so that works out pretty well so it works a lot easier hopefully we'll have a production run here with making the conveyor belts conveyor belting into body mounts oh these lips need some more vodka oh did I say that okay seems how it's a relaxing Sunday I'm playing Norm from Cheers sitting on my bar stool also too back in 1977 my dad didn't have hole punches okay back in the day sort of for punching holes and belting so we used the drill so you'd have to drill a bigger hole and it would jam up get stuck and everything then trying to get the bolt through so this is what we did i have an assortment of hole punches see i wrote in there in english all right so we use this one because we want a 3 8 bolt to go through always have some nice hardwood for pounding it into and also to make sure you have lefts and rights okay so the days of making them and then flip them over don't quite work so i marked them out and we're using a gifted white paint marker okay it's got a very fine tip so i saved it for this special occasion from christmas all right so we thank rex down in california all right so let's get going here so there's the front cab mounts for the 46 made now we got the middle and then we have the back okay lunchtime in the kingdom and we're having bacon no there is no bacon in whoville so the staff got us uh kubasa or garlic ring or something so we'll fry that up with our eggs yes and we're having mushrooms with the eggs and some peppers and some garlic too so it's, i guess it's called an omelet we'll call it scrambled eggs because that's the way i cook all right so we got this done so he's in relaxing morning cutting out the rubbers and everything like that so back here where there's a rubber biscuit or whatever for this mount right here so we're going to replace it with a Canadian hockey puck to make this truck 100% Canadian because that's our trademark. We've been doing it since Christ was a cowboy. All right. So over here, we made sure we disconnected the steering column and the brake pedal. Yes, everything is loose because the cab is going up. So we can't have it, how would you say, anchored. And we even actually undid the rods to the rad cradle. So everything is loose. So after we're done playing outside in the rain or snow with the quads and getting some firewood, then we can come back in here, lift the cab up, put the rubbers under, and that'll be a great relief. All right, let's go burn some lunch and get ready to play outside. Sunday morning in Whoville, and it's just after 9 a.m. and I'm getting ready to make breakfast. As you can see, it's pretty sunny out this morning, but there is a few clouds. It hasn't snowed, but it was raining last night. It actually rained quite a bit. It was pouring when I went to bed last night. Now it's time to head inside, let the dogs out, and make breakfast. Then at 1 p.m. I have to go over to the kingdom. 1 p.m. and I'm just finishing up lunch. I already got the quad out. Now I'll head on over to the kingdom and see what my dad's up to. I don't think we're doing very much today because I have to cook our Sunday supper. We are having ribs with potatoes and veggies. Can't forget the stuffing. Now let's get going. Just after 1 p.m. and I made it to the kingdom. Now I'm down in the quad shed here. Have to get this quad out. But as you can see on the front, we have a couple flat tires. So my dad went to go get the tank. We are also taking the log trailer out here so we can go get some firewood because there is no snow for the toboggan. While I wait for my dad to come with a little air tank, I stepped out to do a little video for you guys. It looks like it started to snow slash rain. It's kind of slushy as you can see here from the puddles as well, but it looks like my dad's come with the air tank, so I'll air up the quad and head on over to the shop. Made it over to the shop, now we have to do a quick service on the quad and then put some air into the log trailer tire since we haven't used it all winter. And then we can head on down the dog trail and go pick up a tree that fell over a while ago and then we can go load up the trailer with some wood. 1.30 and I just put the toboggan away into the skidoo slash quad shed here. Now I'll head on back down to the shop. My dad's just airing up the quad tires and the trailer and then we can head on out. Just waiting for my dad to come with the quad and the log trailer, then I'll catch him going into the north dog trail right here. We are going down to the Roadrunner corner and then onto our new dog trail that leads to the rabbit tower.
made it to Roadrunner Corner, no problem. It is just through the bush on the other side of this trail here. As you can see, this tree fell over a while ago, and we are just getting it picked up now so we can haul it back into the kingdom for firewood. Merry Christmas! Not sure if you were able to hear him, but he just said Merry Christmas. A little Charlie Brown Christmas tree. Our trail originally goes off to the left here and circles back around down by the muskeg, but we have this trail over here it is an original trail also, so we just kind of poked through and found a bunch of scrap, and just through the hill here is the rabbit tower at the bottom. We were able to get the tree cut up and loaded no problem. Now my dad's going to make his way back on into the kingdom. He has to come down the hill here and go all the way past the rabbit tower. I'm not sure if you can see it through the trees right there, but just on the other side of the red ribbon is the rabbit tower. While my dad unloads the tree out of the log trailer, I came up to open up the yellow shed here. I'm going to pick up the last bit of wood so we can empty this out and refill it this summer. Almost 2 p.m. and it's starting to rain and I'm going to fill up the log trailer here with the rest of the wood from the yellow tank shed. Now I can head on down to the shop and see what my dad's up to. Didn't take me very long and I got the yellow tank shed emptied out. Now I'll head on down to the shop and park this in front for my dad. Just after 2 p.m. we got the quad and the welding trailer put away. We are officially done with it, so we're going to take the battery off in case it gets cold again. We don't want the batteries to freeze. That's what my dad's doing at the moment. Then we'll head on over to the shop. Almost 2.30. I'm officially done in the kingdom. Now it's time to head on back into Whoville and put the ribs on. They'll take a couple hours to cook. And as I say that, it started to rain again. It's been on and off raining all day. 2.30 and I just made it back from the kingdom. Now it's time to put the quad away, let the dogs out, and then start the ribs. Almost 3 p.m. and I'm just starting the ribs. These ribs were $19.99, so it would have been $20 for a big pack of ribs. They are double the size of my hand and they have lots of meat on them. So now let's put them on for a couple hours and see how they turn out. 5 p.m. and this is the temperature we're sitting at today. It's 6 degrees Celsius, which is 42 degrees Fahrenheit. We even have the feels like on the bottom. It's been pretty chilly out today. The sun's been peeking through the clouds, but other than that, it's been raining on and off. It was raining a few minutes ago when my dad was walking the dogs. He just messaged to tell me. Now it's time to head inside, finish up supper, and then head to the kingdom. 
almost 6 p.m. and I'm just finishing up supper now. These are my dad's ribs right here. They have a little bit of original bowl barbecue sauce on them. And mine over here has spicy, sweet, chili heat type sauce. So I hope that's going to be good. Now it's time to package everything up and head to the kingdom. 6 p.m. and I forgot to do a video of my prep before, but we have stuffing, vegetables, and whipped up mashed potatoes. And of course you have the gravy. Now let's package this all up. I'll drop it off and end my day. Okay, the other day I drew up the blueprints for a storage box, battery box to be right here by the fuel tank, okay? That only makes sense, put the battery beside the gas tank. All right, so here's the blueprint. We drew it up. All right, let's go see what we're doing outside. Okay, perfect day for cutting the steel. I brought the steel up to the shop a couple of days ago too, and I decided I would do it today. Well, I have to wait for the staff to fill the uh log trader there so i was out here cutting so recycling repurposing steel this steel came from the sheds we tore down last spring at this time so we're repurposing reusing it one more time so we cut the boogers out in the middle and we got some nice plates or steel to be used to build a battery box okay it's raining let's go back inside okay coffee time in the kingdom and we got the cab up on the rubber mounts and hockey pucks yes we use the jackal and put long bolts in so you go up and then put the rubbers in all right does this look like it we did anything there less than nestman so that worked out pretty good after coffee we'll change out the four inch bolts and put in regular ones and here's the remains of the back cab mount looks like a hockey puck could be a hockey puck you never know back in 1946 Okay, after coffee in the kingdom and the wood stove took off burning. So it's way too hot in the shop. It's worse than a hot day here in the summer. You know, those five hot days of summer we get. So we're going to hide in the hose shack here. These are the transmissions that Sir Rodney sent up to us. He found parts and pieces to make the Lynn, trans Lynn tractor number one transmission work. But then the weather changed drastically. Here we rushed to get everything up here and then things changed. So we dumped everything in here into the hose shack. Yes. This is the hoe shack, because there's the hoe and the lovely ladies on the wall. Yes, so we're going to spend an hour in here because the staff is cooking ribs for tonight. So let's clean up this mess in here and then we can get organized. Here's some clutches for the hot rod motors that we bought. There's a transmission for the Lynn tractor. We found out why it doesn't have reverse because somebody put threaded rods in there so the gear doesn't go back all the way to get reverse. No wonder it always jumped out. And then over here on the other side, oops, we keep all the tools and everything separate in the hose shack from the main shop because this is the clean, well, not so clean. Here's the starter for the 46 Chevy truck. There it is, brand new, ready to go. Yes, we spend the money foolishly when we have it. When we don't have it, we don't spend anything. All right, let's get to work. Okay, going through the transmission parts that Sir Rodney sent up to us, and I should have done this a month ago, and we would have had room in the shop here. All right, so I removed the studs from the cores here, and I went through the box of parts here, okay? So then I'm over here, figuring out what I need, okay? And we even got a magnetic plug for the bottom of the transmission. That's a good thing, and then we know pieces are falling off. All right, so there's the top with a good arm or whatever. Uh, shifter arm I think it's called because this one over here is broken then if I choose to weld and fix this up there's the pieces right there so that works out good and then when I was removing the studs from there I got thinking who said they didn't drill this out or the bolt threads were toast so that why would they thread threaded rod in there like this was 30 years ago like I've had this transmission for close to 26 27 years so this was 30 years ago the mechanic was doing this there was no google there was no youtube so that's how he fixed it okay but the only problem is the gear doesn't slide all the way back into reverse so it just chews the edges off so i pulled the nut back and there's loctite so that's a good thing so hopefully these threads are good if not from sir rodney we know the size of these studs so if we have to go bigger smaller whatever we can figure it out so that works out pretty good we're very pleased and we got the gear here right here that part number lines up to be the same as this one over here all right so that's where we're going to finish out the 
uh, rest of the day till five o'clock by moving the parts out of here over to the storage trailer with the little dolly carts with the big wheels so we can make it through the mud. And then the staff will be delivering us the rib supper for tonight. Yes, we're having ribs. Oh, it's going to be so tasty. And then I can relax and enjoy some beer too. Okay, five o'clock on a Sunday. We're quitting early. The boss won't be impressed, but he's an asshole. All right, so it's drizzly rain now. I'll go walk the dogs, get a little wet, and then the staff will be here with my rib dinner. Yes, those ribs are going to taste so good. Oh, I'm not very steady. And look at the flags. Just enough wind to make them look good. All right, let's go walk the dogs, drink some beer, eat some ribs, and we'll talk to you later.